Joe Troman is the lead guitarist of one of the most successful punk rock bands, Fall Out Boy, which he founded with Pete Wentz. Fall Out Boy earned two Grammy nominations, four number one albums, six consecutive top ten albums, sold somewhere around eight million albums worldwide. But behind all of that, Joe says he found himself in the depths of drug abuse and depression, which he says stemmed from a childhood rooted in shame and emotional neglect from his mom, which he now reveals in his new memoir. It's called None of This Rocks. In it, Joe writes this passage. My mom was mentally ill my entire life. As a child, when I would approach my mother for a hug, I would often be met with hands pushing me away in disgust. Throughout my young life, I was left wondering if my mother loved me at all. Joe is now talking about the shame he experienced and his goal is to help other people not fall prey to that pain. Tam Fam, please welcome award-winning musician and advocate for others, Joe Troman. Joe, come on out. Welcome, 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 of course, of course. So many accolades, I'm embarrassed. All of, yes, so many accolades. I'm you, I mean, you're the real deal. I don't know if that's true. Oh, look at you. I don't know if that's true. Yeah. Grammy nominations, albums around the world, but this is... Well, Grammy losses. Gra well, gra yeah. well, well yeah. <laughs> Joe, listen, the nomination is more than me and anybody here right now. <laughs> but, you know, that's funny you say that because I watched you come out and, and you're you know, self-deprecating and I see this kid. Yeah this kid who wrote as an adult the words I just read about feeling no love from your mother and understanding that the source of her detachment seemed to be mental illness. Yes. It was, uh, it's tough because I, I don't want to blame her. She was truly very, very sick. She had um, radiation therapy to get rid of a tumor back in the 1970s and it, it just, the, the, uh, the science wasn't what it is now. Yeah. So she lived with basically radiation poisoning and sort of a, uh, a brain decay of sorts. So she was very ill uh, my whole life. And uh, unfortunately, whatever happened to her may have affected the part of her brain that controlled emotions, but she never had the ability to uh, reciprocate love at all, which was incredibly tough. You now know this, but as a kid, you don't. No. And, the, and everyone else is saying, my mom, hug my mom this, because mom, the very word means love and, sure. and, and comfort. And you weren't getting that. Yeah. How did that create this first type of shame, which is a shame to tell people, I don't get love at home, or that my mom is ill? It was really confusing. I think I constantly would ask my father, why is she this way? And he would try to explain to me, she can't help it. You just have to try to understand. But like, as, you know, as he said, as a child, you don't understand why your mother won't just love you. So I, would, uh, I wasn't given the tools to uh, seek out a positive affirmation. I also didn't know how to positively affirm myself. So you're like a heat-seeking missile to pain. Yeah, absolutely. Because that's what you learn all you your know. whole life. All you know is pain, so you search for pain. Which is so striking because I, I believe you were 15 when you got your first record deal. or A little older, a little but bit. yeah, I started touring at 15. You started touring yeah. at 15. Yeah. You and Pete, you know, creating magic, lightning in the bottle, as they say. That does not look like a rock star either, let me just tell you. <laughs> let me that's, but that's who I see myself as still. He's I, adorable. In a way. Under that shirt, it's Clark Kent. Listen, you are, I mean, this kid, though. Right, is, is almost about to be bar mitzvah. He's so excited. <laughs> so you're, you're, you're still moving forward. You, you make history in so many ways with this band and this music and this movement. Did that help? at all erase some of that pain? Well, I mean, this is gonna sound cliche, but your problems begin with home. It mm -hmm. begins where you're raised. That's not so, cliche, it's true. I mean, by, you know, everyone's, you go into the therapist's office and they say, tell me about your childhood. Mm -hmm. Of course, Ch tell me about your childhood. But all of your problems start from your parents, good and bad, um, and trying to find validation in other places to fill that void at least for me, it never worked. Mm. Like, um, I'm not sure if I still to this day even see all the success that I've had as, um, as mine. Mm. You know, of, of course I share it with other people first off, but um, it doesn't 
satisfy me or fulfill me. I've had to, I've been in therapy since. But is that where yeah. the drugs came in? Because I know you write about to these degree. doctors that prey on people and it was never hard to get drugs. I mean, it, when you're a rock star, I always wonder how that feels because in the title, it's sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Sure. It sure. seems like that's what you're supposed to do. Well, yeah, there's the party element, though I would say Fall Out Boy was never a big sex, drugs, and rock no, and roll No, but the band. environment of but, rock star. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, that, again, is another cliche. Um, it came from two places. One, I have severe back problems. I've had a lot of surgeries. So I was given narcotic painkillers, which started, gave me the taste, you yeah, could say. Yeah. Uh, and then, um, yeah, there's these guys, we colloquially refer to them as rock docs. They're doctors that like to ingratiate themselves with like musicians. They wish they were musicians. Some of them even say, hey, come see my band play after I give you these pills. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, mine was a lap steel player, actually. Um, and uh, that's, I think, how I began to get them in you know, droves. And then from there, I would just seek them out wherever I could. But even in that rock star world, I know you write about this moment where you run into your idol. Yes and your idol, this is a big moment, you meet someone you look up to, and he basically says, you look terrible. Yeah. Uh, it's my buddy, Scott from Anthrax. Um, Scott Ian from Anthrax. Scott Ian from Anthrax, yeah. He uh, came out to see Fall Out Boy play in England, and the first thing he said in his kind of native New York voice, he goes, you look like hell. You look terrible. <laughs> and, I'm like, and when you looked in the mirror, <laughs> it was the first time you said you saw a junkie. I saw a junkie, and no junkie enjoys becoming a junkie. You know, even though I was taking those pills for pain at first, it was an escape, mm. because I had so many self-flagellating thoughts all the time. You know, I was diagnosed clinically depressed very young, a lot of anxiety disorders. Recently uh, diagnosed with bipolar type two. It was an interesting thing to get diagnosed, you know, when you're almost 40. Um, so I was taking a lot of drugs to escape just negative thoughts. But here you are at this moment of pure shame and yes. it's attached to someone you look up to. Coming up, how Joe took that moment and many others and uses his platform to help break the stigma of addiction, mental health, and shame. That's next. When using drugs and alcohol to ward off your problems, you'll find you must keep taking stronger drugs and drinking more and more to push said problems away. Your tolerance will build and your problems will keep following you. They want to be dealt with. They won't be ignored. And here I was face to face with my depression, my anxiety, and my feelings of complete and utter insecurity and incompetence within my band, which at the time was my entire life. It felt awful and I didn't want to feel it. Welcome back. Today we're talking about addiction shaming and why people do it. My guests today say it's easy to point the finger and pass judgment, but what's really needed is empathy. And that led lead guitarist and co-founder of the punk rock band Fall Out Boy, Joe Troman, to talk about his life story. And that's the audiobook from his memoir, None of This Rocks. And Joe is still with us. I'm curious what you think. I, I read some of those headlines about Anne Heche and people just instantly judging and saying, I have no empathy for her because she had a choice as a person addicted. I think it's ridiculous. I think people aren't relating her trauma to her addiction. At the end of the day, the trauma and the thoughts inside of your own head can be so extreme mm -hmm. that you are looking for a quick way to silence it. And yeah, I mean, it's very easy to get alcohol. It's very easy to get pills. Mm -hmm. It's probably easy to get And it seems easy very to many, judge, too. Yeah. I mean, even you have parents, like I have family members, and, you know, I've done an intervention with a dear friend of mine, but we all are still learning, but we all, I think, know reasonably that judgment is not the part of the, the component that we need to deal with this. No, nobody reacts well to being judged. No one's yeah. like, oh, thank you so much for the judgment. Right. I'm gonna shame. I'm gonna, thank you for telling me exactly my life is I, a mess. I right. needed to be shamed. Yeah. That's what's gonna get me out of this vicious cycle. No, um, the information is out there, but that doesn't mean people are reading it. Right. I mean, so many people are misinformed and willingly misinformed these days. The last thing they're looking at is, um, how addiction works mm -hmm. and how people use it to, it, again, it's so easy to get a hold of these properties and use them to mask your pain. It's, I mean, it's attractive, if anything. Yeah. It's, I mean, especially we have a, 
we don't have a great health care in this country. And so, you know, it's not like we have a lot of access to um, easy mental health mm -hmm. uh, facilities and, th and therapists and such. So, um, you know, a bottle of booze or, a, a you know. Numbing. Or, yeah. you know, I mean, that can be your yeah. therapist or mm -hmm. you think it's your therapist, you know. Let me ask you, your mother passed away in 2015? About eight years ago, yeah. Eight years yeah. ago. This version of your life and what you're doing for others, even with her personal struggles, what do you think she would say? Probably nothing great. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I'm not sure she was, you know, I was talking about it with my oldest daughter, who is eight, and trying to explain more of who she is. She asks about her all the time. Oh. And I think even if, and again, when I was growing up, um, mental health wasn't, the discussions around mental health and therapy weren't as prevalent as they are now. Yeah. And so I don't think she would have even accepted any sort of therapy or mental health treatment, even if it was given to her. So I'm not sure she'd have the perspective to understand. Well, let me rephrase it then. Yeah. You have perspective now yeah. on her journey. Yes. What would you want her to know? Uh, that I love her unconditionally, but, um, and I don't blame her, but what she did happened. Okay. It happened and, you know. You can't, you can't erase that, you know? But it's not her fault. I, I really don't blame her. Yeah. Even though she, she messed me up, I really, really, I don't think it's her fault. It's, she had the faculty she had. Yeah. Well, it sounds like you're an amazing dad and you're having a oh. candid conversation with your child to break the cycle. Trying. The pain. You're doing more than trying, man. You're winning. I'm you're trying. trying. I want her one day. I don't want her to write a book about me. You don't want her to write a book? I don't want her to write a book about me one day, at least not in this regard. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story, and thank you for what you're doing for other people. Oh, exactly. my pleasure. Thanks for having me. None of This Rocks is now available in bookstores and online in TamFam. You're all going home with your own very own copy of the book to share with others. This is all of us. We have to do something together about this.